Cat Synth TV. Hey everybody, Cat Synth TV, and today we are looking at the ARP 2600V from Arturia. This is going to be a two-part series. In part one, we will focus on the main modules and the basic synthesis features. Please do subscribe to this channel for part two and for other synthesizer content coming out regularly. And please consider supporting us via Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. In 1971, Alan R. Perlman and Dennis Collin of ARP developed the 2600, a successor to their massive modular synthesizer, the ARP 2500. This new instrument was intended to be simpler to use, with pre-wired modules ready to play. The initial version was dubbed the Blue Marvin or Blue Mini because of its unique blue coloring. Successor models would turn to gray and black, before settling on the iconic black and orange finish in the mid-1970s. Originally targeted towards educational institutions, the later models of the ARP 2600 found success as a performance synthesizer because of its pre-wired architecture and relatively portable nature. It was used by many artists, including Joe Zawinul, Stevie Wonder, and Herbie Hancock. And it was also the synthesizer behind the voice of everyone's favorite astromech droid, R2-D2. In 2020, Korg re-released a limited edition of the ARP 2600. I had the opportunity to play it at NAMM, and you can see our demo via the link at the top of this video. The Arturia ARP 2600V recreates the look, feel, and sound of the original. There's the main suitcase section, which draws inspiration from the 1975-2601 version, with its orange and black interface. There's also a connected keyboard section. In between, there is an additional section that recreates ARP's 1601 sequencer, along with an additional LFO module that was not part of the original. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the main section. The main modules include three VCOs, each of which can produce a number of simultaneous waveforms. VCOs 2 and 3 have four waveforms each, while VCO 1 has a square and sawtooth. The VCF module has a mixer for input from the VCOs and other modules, several different filter modes, and parameters for cutoff, fine frequency control, resonance, and an additional control for notch. There's a VCA and a separate final mixer which includes stereo controls and a spring reverb. There are two envelopes, an ADSR as well as a simple attack release envelope. To the left of the VCOs are modules for external input and a ring modulator. On the next row, we have a noise generator, a sample and hold function, and a series of voltage processors that can be used for a variety of functions. Finally, we have these two secret compartments that open up advanced features. We have chorus and delay effects to the left, and on the right we have a series of tracking generators, drawable control functions that can be used as additional LFOs or control processors. Now there's a lot going on here, and it can look a bit intimidating, but the cool thing about the 2600 is that most of the modules have hardwired defaults, making it easier to use without any patch cords. If we look at the filter, for example, we can see that a waveform from each VCO is hardwired into the VCF, such as the square of VCO1. The VCF is then hardwired into the VCA, so with the volume of VCO1 up on the filter, we can play the square wave right away. We can turn that down and turn up the pulse wave of VCO2. This is a pulse with variable width that we can control here. And VCO3 is hardwired for sawtooth. We can bring all three oscillators together, and if we detune each slightly, we can get that thick analog sound. Each oscillator has an octave control, so let's make VCO1 an octave lower. If we want different waveforms for the VCOs, we can use patch cords to access them. 
we can patch the sawtooth from VCO1 and VCO2 into their respective spots on the filter. We can pick any inputs, but using the name VCO inputs makes it easier to stay organized on simple patches. Ah, that's a nice, rich, triple saw sound. Okay, let's go back to our original waveforms. This is a good moment to take a closer look at the VCF. It's a multimodal filter that includes a 24 dB low pass as in the original 2600, 12 dB low pass, high pass, band pass, and notch. The ADSR envelope is hardwired to control frequency, but let's turn that off for the moment and explore each of the filter modes manually. First, the 24 dB low pass. Let's turn up the resonance a bit. It gets pretty crunchy pretty quickly at higher resonances, and can even self-oscillate in this mode. But let's play it conservatively for now. Now the other four filter modes were not part of the original. Here's the 12 dB low pass. High pass. Band pass. And finally the notch filter, which uses this additional notch frequency slider. Let's go back to 24 dB and bring in the ADSR. And now we've got ourselves a nice classic analog synth sound. Let's go ahead and turn up a little of the reverb. And maybe a bit of chorus. Now we could stop here and you'd already have a lot of synth to work with, with only a few patch chords. But the real fun starts when we start adding more modulation. Let's reset things and go back to the pulse wave on VCO2. We can add pulse width modulation from the LFO. Let's go down here to the LFO module, which also has multiple waveforms. Let's connect the triangle of the LFO to the pulse width modulation input. Also, remember to disconnect the mod wheel from the LFO and turn down vibrato. There we have pulse width modulation. Let's bring up VCO1 and connect the sine wave of the LFO to one of its frequency modulation inputs. As we increase the frequency, we move from more of a vibrato effect to more FM synthesis.
Now, the original 2600 did not have this separate LFO function, but instead allowed a VCO to act as an LFO. Let's try that now. We'll connect VCO2's sine wave to the frequency modulation of VCO1, and set VCO2 to low frequency mode. There we have an LFO pitch effect. But if we move VCO back into the higher octaves, we get a full-on FM synthesizer. We can adjust the depth and frequency to get different characteristic FM sounds. Let's turn our attention to the sample and hold module. It is a standard sample and hold that takes an input signal and samples it based on an internal clock or an external signal. By default, the input is the noise generator, which has a parameter for different noise functions. Let's connect the sample and hold to the frequency modulation of VCO1. Tune the clock rate and other parameters. Here we have a classic sample and hold pitch modulation. Now we can use any signal as input instead of noise. Let's try the sawtooth from VCO2. Set it to low frequency mode and invert the sawtooth. these interesting scale or arpeggio style effects. Now we can use the sample and hold clock to trigger the AR envelope by switching the envelope to trigger mode. We now have a crude arpeggiator that can behave differently depending on VCO2. use different frequency modulation on VCO2 to add some variety. Shape the filter a bit. And add in the delay effect. As you can see in here, we can already make some complex sounds, but we have really just scratched the surface on what this instrument can do. In part two, we will cover the tracking generator, the sequencer, and other features to create more advanced patches, so stay tuned for that. To find out more about the ARP 2600V, please visit Arturia.com and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.